everyone, Reefer Gill here. In this video, I want to talk about the GFO and the carbon that I've been using for the last four years and also demonstrate on how to properly change it out. Before I demonstrate on how to change out the carbon and the GFO, I'll talk about what the purposes of each are. I've run BRS's GFO for the past four years and change it out on a regular basis. In the four years I've been running it in my 75 gallon system, I've never experienced any kind of algae outbreak of any kind. There are a variety of companies that produce GFO products, but in my experience, BRS's GFO is tried and true, so I'll continue to run it. Carbon is used to clear up your water by absorbing those elements that cause yellowing in your water, which will affect the light penetration. Carbon also absorbs contaminants and organics to include toxins released by some corals as a defense mechanism to warn off intruding rival corals. I run carbon 24-7 to clear up the water and provide for coral health. Like with BRS's GFO, I've only run BRS's ROX 0.8 for the past four years. You can run media separately in a media bag like this one. You will need to place the bag in a high flow area, remember to change them out. The frequency in which you change out the media bags is mostly dependent on the size and bio load of your system. You will typically need to change out the carbon media more frequently than the media you use to remove phosphates. Another method to run your media is by using a reactor. I run a dual BRS carbon and GFO reactor powered by a Cobalt MJ1200 pump. The first thing to do is turn off the Cobalt MJ1200. Once I turn it off, I remove the half inch hose from the quick connect and remove the reactor from the sump. I place the reactors on a level surface and use a canister wrench to loosen each canister. I can then remove the canisters by hand. Remember that it is still water inside each canister, so put the first canister aside and remove the second canister to avoid accidental spills. I walk both canisters to my utility sink where I remove the cartridges that hold the media inside each canister. I will allow the water to drain from the cartridges and empty the water from the canisters. Remove the top seal followed by the top screen. If you get any media lodged between the screen and the canister, it makes it more difficult to remove the screen. With respect to the carbon cartridges, there are two carbon sponges. The purpose of the sponges is to hold the carbon suspended inside the cartridge while allowing water to flow through them. Unlike GFO media, you do not want your carbon to actually tumble because it will disintegrate and turn into a black cloud which will leach into your system. The goal is to have water pass through the carving, allowing it to absorb unwanted contaminants from the water. I reuse my sponges until they get to the point where they become hard, at which time I'll replace them with new ones. I will then walk to the trash can and empty out the GFO and the carbon. The more carbon you use, the deeper the second sponge will be inside the canister. I tend to use a little bit more than the recommended amount, so the second sponge is pretty deep inside the canister and I can't reach it with my fingers. I'll try tapping it out. If that doesn't work, I'll grab myself a clean, rusty screwdriver and work it out that way. I use tap water to rinse out the canisters and carbon sponges. I'll try to work out as much of the carbon from the sponges as I can. When I'm done, I'll squeeze out all the tap water and I'm good to go. I know I might be asked, so I'll clarify now that using tap water on equipment like this is okay to do because it's such a minuscule amount of water that it won't affect your system. Just make sure you try to get as much of it off the equipment or sponges as you can. This next step is very important. A big complaint about these reactors is they get clogged up, reducing the amount of flow and rendering the media useless. I take the time to examine the screens and use a toothbrush to remove all the loose material. You want to be able to see air in between all the gaps. The bottom of each cartridge also has a screen. Since I only have easy access to the exposed side of the screen, cleaning the bottom of the cartridge can be more difficult. I start by removing loose material with a toothbrush. For more stubborn clogs, I use a small flathead screwdriver to clean each gap. If you try this, be very, very careful not to break the screen. They're very brittle and can easily be broken. Next, I'll take both seal tops and clean them with a the toothbrush. By doing this, you'll reduce the chances of any channels forming in between the seal and the canister, which can cause leaks. Lastly, I clean out the bracket, including the channel where the water flows from the GFO canister to the carbon canister. It's a good idea to occasionally inspect the hoses to ensure there's no buildup that restricts the water flow. An occasional vinegar cleaning would also help with cleaning out your hoses. Now that everything is clean, it's time to refill the cartridges with media. Grab yourself a funnel like this one to make the process easier and cleaner. The first media to be filled is the BRS GFO. 
BRS recommended amount is one tablespoon per every four gallons. It's also recommended to change out the GFO every four to eight weeks. Since the carbon will deplete at a faster rate, I change out both carbon and GFO roughly around every four weeks. It's hard to see in the video, but the GFO will actually stay in the cartridge. Based on the stain level of the cartridge, I know how much to fill. I do use more than the recommended amount, but that's my personal preference. Place the screen top back on the canister with the center nipple facing upwards, followed by the seal top. Then slip the cartridge into the canister and set it aside. Next we will do the ROX 0.8 BRS carbon. BRS recommends one tablespoon per every 10 gallons. I place the first sponge in by pushing it down with my fingertips, fill up the cartridge leaving yourself enough space to add the second sponge. After adding the second sponge, secure the screen top followed by the seal. Next pair up the media with the corresponding labels on the mounting bracket. Hand tighten each canister, then use the wrench to tighten the rest of the way. It's very important you use the wrench to finish off the tightening process because you will spring a leak just like I did and you'll have a water mess all over the place. Before I go back upstairs, I like to take the extra 20 seconds to wipe down the reactor of any excess water. It's important because I don't want to hook up the reactor, see some water on the outside of the canisters and dismiss it as being leftover water from the process of changing out the media when in fact I may have a slow leak. On a side note, I created a stand out of egg crate and PVC. My sump is taller than the reactor and I have no room underneath the stand to mount the reactor inside. So the stand allows me to properly fit the reactor so that the hose reach over the top of the sump and down into the water. I hook up the hose to the pump, grab a bucket and turn on the reactor's pump. Place the drain hose inside the bucket and flush out the media. I'll typically fill up the bucket two to three times to ensure the media is properly flushed out. Once the media has been properly flushed out, I use this valve to adjust the flow into the reactor until I get the GFO to tumble at a rate that looks something like this. That'll do it for this video. What? No, hon, I didn't buy a new headset. It's not even turned on. It's from the PS4. I was just using it for a prop. If you'd like to follow along, I have a bill coming up. Hit the thumbs up. Subscribe. Thanks a lot.